I think this could be it, honestly, Joe. In this story video, we take a look at the amazing UFC career of the Diamond Poirier. Dustin started to build a name for himself in the UFC featherweight division with some spectacular wins over tough competition. Before fighting Conor McGregor in the UFC, he only lost against the Korean Zombie submission and a short notice unanimous decision against Cub Swanson in London. In 31 UFC fights, Poirier never lost back to back, which is very impressive. Upcoming superstar Conor McGregor had his first real big test against Dustin Poirier at UFC 178. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about it, Conor McGregor is for real. Dustin admitted Conor's trash talk got in his head. Nevertheless, this defeat was the start of an impressive run where the diamond showed his skills, grit, and determination. When I get in there and fight for that belt, I want to be ready 100%. No looking back, no regrets. And uh, I think that takes time and growth with fights. After the loss against the Notorious, Dustin made his return to the lightweight division. Despite his loss against Michael Johnson, the American top team fighter beat a few former champions like Eddie Alvarez, Anthony Pettis, and former interim champion Justin Gaethje. With those amazing accomplishments, Dustin earned an interim title shot against former foe Max Holloway. In this back-and-forth title fight, the diamond was once again too much for Holloway. This victory earned Dustin an undisputed title shot against undefeated legend Khabib, the eagle, Nurmagomedov. It's going to be a very bad night for him. UFC 242 in Abu Dhabi was indeed not Dustin's night. Dustin landed a nice round. Khabib dominated and finished Poirier in the third round with a rear naked choke. Khabib did help Dustin's, the Good Fight Foundation though, with a big donation matched by UFC President Dana White. Fighting-wise, though this was a big setback in Dustin Poirier career, and then Dan Hooker called him out for a fight. Once again, the Diamond proved he's a real-born fighter and defeated this Hooker in an absolute war. This victory proved Dustin is still top of the food chain and belongs in the big money fights in the UFC. Next was the inevitable rematch between the Diamond and the Notorious at UFC 257 in Abu Dhabi. A special fight on Fight Island during a special time. McGregor looked good and sharp, but here we saw once again that Dustin... This victory was not only a big statement from Dustin, it also set up another money fight with the Irishman, who was super hungry for redemption and revenge. The third fight got a lot more amosity in the build-up, but ended at the end of the first round. Conor McGregor broke his foot. Question remains if he could have beat Poirier, because it looked like Dustin was starting to destroy Conor again. All this led to the second title shot for the Diamond against reborn Brazilian phenom Charles Oliveira. In his second UFC title fight, Dustin showed he can strike with the best. In the second round, however, he got dominated. Arie came really close to be the undisputed champion, but unfortunately, he faced a better opponent that day in Charles Oliveira. As a comeback fight, he didn't face one of the young up-and-comers, but he crossed path with another veteran in Michael Chandler at UFC 281. Iron Mike Chandler is no joke. A dangerous fighter with a lot of explosive power. This fight was firework as expected and ended up being fight of the night. In the third round, Dustin Poirier finished Chandler with a rear naked choke and proved that he's a legit BJJ black belt. Who ain't got you jit to? The second BMF fight in the history of the UFC was a rematch between two of the most loved fighters. Both guys are must-watch television and really embody what fighting means. Everybody was looking forward to this fight. Unfortunately for Dustin, it was Justin's moment. A for him, untypical head kick knockout shocked the MMA world. This loss was devastating for Dustin Poirier. This late in his career, a new title shot looked further away than ever before. Now, the Diamond was almost forced to face a new young lion, and he accepted a fight versus the France dangerous fighter Benoit Saint-Denis. The nickname God of War really fits the Frenchman, and he was the big oh favorite gosh, in this battle. Poirier. 
Underdog Dustin Poirier kinda shocked the UFC fans with a beautiful knockout in the second round. In this industry, winning alone is not always enough. Dana White loves fighters who are entertaining. With this performance and his incredible resume, Dustin Poirier skipped the line and got his third and final title shot. So depressed when I can't seem to get out But something deep inside won't let me quit I swear that I'm inspired by all this shit Tell me that I can and I won't That's what guides me the most Fuck your lies, I'll do what I want At UFC 302, Dustin Poirier had the chance to finish this Rocky story in style The mission was simple beating the pound for pound number one fighter in the world, Islam Makachev. The first round started bad, though, and it looked like Islam was just going to out-wrestle Poirier or submit him fast. Nothing was like that. Makachev was amazing, but Dustin also had his moments and fought like a true champion. In the end, it was not enough, and the champion from Dagestan won with a great submission in round five. Champion, ladies and gentlemen, Islam Makachev! I, I think this could be it, honestly, Joe. Future in the cage and everything. You've had a little bit of time now to let things settle. Uh, any different thoughts or anything you want to elaborate on? I guess all fight fans would love to see the Diamond continue his career. But if not, we can only thank him and congratulate him with his amazing career. A true champion in and out the octagon.